Welcome to Grand Prairie Update. I'm Don Johnson. And I'm Terry Briggs. You have a chance to help redraw the boundaries for the city council districts in Grand Prairie. The boundaries in the current map are being reconfigured to give equal representation to voters as required by the U.S. Constitution. According to the 2010 census, the population in some districts has increased, creating an imbalance. The proposed Map A is drawn to compensate for the changes without diluting minority representation or displacing current council members. The districts basically follow the same patterns across the city that they are now, but in particular District uh, 2, 3, and 4 have to lengthen. They have to run further south than what they did previously in order to pick up the population. That increases their size it also reduces the size of District 6, which was overpopulated under the current figures. City officials outlined the proposal and took public comments during a hearing on Thursday night. You can make comments at a second hearing Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Betty Warmack Branch Library. The proposed map will also be on display at several locations as well as on the city's website. After the hearings, the City Council will vote on the map and then it goes to the U.S. Department of Justice for approval, in effect in time for the May 2012 election. For more information about the redistricting process, go to the City's website or contact the City Secretary. It's an unfortunate sign of the times for sale signs in front of foreclosed homes. And even more alarming is the rate that it's happening in our own backyard. Grand Prairie is right in the middle of one of the hardest hit areas in the entire state of Texas. For the uh, Dallas and Tarrant County areas, uh, those counties are pretty much rating, uh, ranking about two and three in the state of Texas as with uh, the number of foreclosures. So pretty high foreclosure rate, so we're trying to do something about that. Tarrant County Housing Partnership, how can I help you? These are the offices of one of the City of Grand Prairie's partners in that effort, the Tarrant County Housing Partnership, a Fort Worth-based agency that recently joined forces with federal mortgage provider Fannie Mae in an effort to expand the area's foreclosure prevention program. This has just you know, made this process a lot smoother, quicker. Uh, any homeowner that their loan is uh, owned by Fannie Mae, they can come through us and we can gather the documents uh, send them directly to Fannie Mae and get a, um, a, a resolution normally within 30 days. Espinoza's agency often works in cooperation with the Grand Prairie Housing and Neighborhood Services Department to provide an option for distressed homeowners. Both agencies want you to know that they have a number of programs in place to help residents avoid foreclosure. We offer post-purchase home buyer counseling whereby families can come into our office and speak to someone, one of our counselors, that can assist them with budgeting and credit. We also can refer these clients to other HUD approved council agencies such as Tarrant County Housing Partnership. We work with clients, I mean we don't want to get to that point, but we work with clients, they have a foreclosure date scheduled and we're able to gather documentation and you know work with a mortgage company to get them on some sort of repayment plan uh, or maybe even a modification. Free services are available in English and Spanish for all homeowners regardless of county of residence. For more information, you can contact the Grand Prairie Housing and Neighborhood Services Department or the Tarrant County Housing Partnership, either online or by phone. Changes are on the way at Lone Star Park, the city's 15-year-old thoroughbred racetrack. The track is starting a multi-million dollar renovation that includes the simulcast pavilion, grandstand, and backstretch area. Plans for the pavilion call for a top-to-bottom makeover. Contractors are starting the job by tearing out the old video monitors, fixtures, and furniture. During construction, simulcast operations are being relocated to the grandstand. Six. 363. All right. Smokers can wager on the first floor, non smokers on the second floor. Track officials hope the remodeled pavilion can reopen in time for the Breeders' Cup this fall. The primary benefit of these improvements will be to uh, provide a, a new product offering in our post time pavilion, which 
is uh, the key simulcasting facility 363 days of the year, which is really our bread and butter for the year-round operations. It uh, supports a lot of salaries. Uh, the purses are generated through simulcast racing in the off-season, so when our customers come back for live racing, uh, we, we hope to have higher purses uh, by making these improvements. Hopefully some of the uh, enhancements that are made uh, are going to attract uh, not only the customer that we may have lost over the last few years because they found another opportunity to, to uh, a form of entertainment, but new customers. <laughs> The improvement project comes on the heels of the state license approval for Global Gaming Solutions, the new owners of the track. Live racing returns to Lone Star Park with the fall quarter horse meet, which runs from September 16th through November 12th. A one-of-a-kind movie event is happening this week at the Uptown Theater in Grand Prairie. It's the Lois Weber Film Festival, a cinema experience that features motion pictures directed by women. Organizers say the festival is designed to spotlight the achievements of those directors and pay homage to Weber, a film pioneer who was one of the most successful directors of the 1920s. The film festival is based on the Lois Weber collection, which is at the Grand Prairie Library System, and it's the largest single collection of movies directed by women anywhere, as far as we know. We have over 200 titles in the collection. We started it two years ago based on the idea that Women's roles in motion pictures, especially as directors, has been pretty much forgotten over the years. Maybe in the last year or so since we opened the collection, you've seen more women start to direct. But from 1940 to basically 1983, there was no working directors who were women. And we wanted to honor their history in the motion picture industry and what they had done in the motion picture industry. And that's what we hope the collection does. And the Phil Festival is a celebration of that collection. The Grand Prairie Library and the Grand Prairie Arts Council are sponsoring the festival, which continues through Saturday, July 30th. For tickets and showtimes, go online at uptowntheatergp.com or artsgp.com. Quick Trip Park was the site of something a little bit different as it played host to a men versus women's fast pitch softball challenge. The game was promoted and staged by 1310 The Ticket the popular local sports talk radio station. The ticket team was made up of station personalities and a designated female pitcher. Their opposition, the Dallas Patriots, an all-star women's team made up of current and former college players. The event drew a crowd of about 2,000 people who were a part of the radio station's live play-by-play -play broadcast inside the stadium. The game was close and entertaining throughout, and in the end, it was the guys who got to celebrate a surprising one-run win. We did what no one thought we could do. We overcame. We overcame odds, we overcame age, we overcame our, our gender. And uh, it's really all about Donovan, his leadership. We won. I'm 1-0 and in my managerial debut, and I have to give it up for the man who had the game winning RBI, young Michael Gruber, catcher extraordinaire. Thank you. They did a good job. They did a good job. They, they, they did great. Ultimately, the real celebration will be at the David Nicholas Organ Donor Awareness Foundation, the Grand Prairie organization that is the beneficiary of the proceeds from the event. In 2000, I built an apartment complex here in Grand Prairie called The Landings, and I gave that to my foundation, and that endows the foundation. So now we provide uh, anywhere from five to ten apartments free for families who come from outside the state who need a, uh, a waiting for a transplant, let them live at the apartment complex for free, and they stay there as long as they need to stay there. Seeing how many people came, I think I think it's amazing that you know all these people came out to support and just really give money to a great cause. It's much love, man. This is what it's all about. For more information about the David Nicholas Foundation, you can call 972-264-8917 or log on to nicholasfoundation.org.
Grand Prairie wants you to expose your green side by using the city's curbside recycling program. Curbside collections generated nearly 4,000 tons of recyclable material last year, but officials say Grand Prairie can do better. Two years ago in December, we did a curbside recycling um, audit, if you will, and we went out and checked to see how people, over a period of six weeks, to see how many people actually put out bins by curbside and we found that the recycling set-out rate was about 18 percent. The city is launching a publicity campaign online and in print, hoping to boost collections to 8,000 tons a year. Here's how you can get started. Pick up a free recycling bin from City Hall, the Landfill, the Bulls Life Center, Prairie Paws Adoption Center, Fire Station 9, or the Lake Parks Operation Center. Or you can buy blue plastic bags and use them. You can put cans, glass containers, plastic containers, newspapers, and flattened boxes into the green bins or blue bags without separating the items. There are some things you cannot put at the curb, including pizza boxes, styrofoam, aluminum foil, light bulbs, window and auto glass, mirrors, dishes, ceramics, toys, and any containers used for hazardous waste. Put the bin or bags at the curb on your pickup day before 7 a.m. You'll find a map of the collection schedule on the city's website, or you can call 972-237-8061. Officials say the bottom line to recycling is this. It saves space at the landfill, which extends the lifespan of the landfill, which saves taxpayers millions of dollars. For more information about curbside recycling, go online at gptx.org slash recycling or call 972-237-8061. That's it for this edition of Grand Prairie Update. Don't forget, you can watch any of our Channel 16 programs by going online to gptx.org slash gptv.